Good morning, Pickle Panthers. It is time for your Monday morning mantra. It is week five, I believe now, isn't it? You are correct. Okay. So I will not do any introductions because your other people are here. So I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Well, I pick Hi, on guys. Oh, sorry. I messed <laughs> up already. Nope. Keep going. You got it. Keep on going. Hi, guys. It's Miss Jones, PPW. Hey, you know me, Shirley Truesdale, school counselor, back at it. And Mr. Hey. Marcioni. All right. So, Monday morning mantras uh, with all of us and our special guest, Miss Jones. Hey, Miss Jones, you want to explain why we have horses up there in your, with your name? Well, yes. Um, as a lot of you guys know, my daughter Peyton goes to school with us and she rides horses all the time. My other daughter, Addison, also rides horses. So basically, I am the barn mom. I get to go there and do all the cleaning and all the hard work. They do help, but basically our lives revolve around horses. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, so we're going to get started. Um, again, this is episode five. Hope you're all doing well. And our first slide is actually Miss Jones. Okay, guys, I wanted to um, be able to reach out to you this week to talk about a couple things that I know that I'm kind of dealing with and my um, daughters are dealing with as well. I really liked the first opening on this slide where it says, have your days blurred into Apex classroom assignments and aimlessly searching on Netflix, boring days or nights, because I know mine definitely have. So I put a couple tips here. I'm not going to read every one for you, but I was going to highlight a couple of them uh, that I know I've struggled with so far in these past couple of weeks. So the first one is don't overindulge in unhealthy food and drinks like candy, chips, and soda. So I'm one of those people that absolutely love chips, and I have to kind of limit myself to how many I'm uh, intaking um, for the week. Uh, another thing that I wanted to point out to you guys was um, managing your environment, uh, talking about your downtime environment versus your schoolwork environment. So downtime is probably in your room or in a comfy spot in your house where you're kind of laid back and you're on your phone or tablet or computer, whatever you have. And it's, it's probably a real comfy spot. Well, your schoolwork environment should be a little bit different. You should be sitting at a table or a desk or at least something where you can kind of be upright and working and alert. So just making sure that it's going to be kind of difficult for you to be engaged if you're kind of slumped over in your bed working, working on your computer and Apex. So just try and think about that. See if there's a place in your house, if you haven't already, that would be more conducive to schoolwork versus your downtime environment. Um, another one was have pride in yourself. I actually was joking around with Miss Truesdale a little bit earlier and told her I actually blew dry my hair today so that I could see you guys. So make sure you're taking a little bit of extra time in yourself. It doesn't have to be, you know, every day as far as getting, you know, getting dressed and getting fancy or um, things like that, but try to get out of your pajamas if you can. <laughs> Um, and the last thing, a little bit more serious note, is to be truthful about your feelings with the adults in your household. Sometimes um, we kind of bottle some things inside, and we need to make sure that we're talking about things. Um, I know that uh, Peyton and I do a lot of talking together, but my youngest one kind of likes to talk more with her father about things. So just try and see if you have somebody in your household that you can kind of be truthful about the feelings that are going on during this quarantine. So once again, and I wasn't gonna read everything, but those are just a couple of things I wanted to highlight on for tips, okay? Mm -hmm. Moving on to, as we move on to the next slide, I'm actually gonna show, you talk about not eating unhealthy things. I have a thing of wasabi <laughs> peas and chips right next to my desk here, so I should have been doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard. <laughs> All right. So I'm also going to talk on this slide, family activities. Uh, I know it's kind of hard when we're stuck in a rut of doing the same thing every morning, waking up, going on Apex, doing your assignment, visiting teams, um, whatever you guys have going on in your households. But it does 
help if you take some time to be active with your family um, or whomever lives in your household with you. Uh, one of the things that I really liked on this um, slide here was sharing five things you love about everybody in the family. It doesn't take long, take a couple of minutes, just kind of sit down and, and talk about some things you like, highlight somebody in your family. Not only will it make you feel better, but it'll make them feel good as well. The one towards the bottom, make a picnic in the living room. My family calls this couple squat. We eat at the kitchen table for every meal. Um, but on Friday nights, we like to sit in the living room and kind of just, uh, after I just talked about unhealthy eating, but kind of just sit around and maybe have a pizza or something like that while we watch TV. And it's, it's something out of the ordinary for my family. So they really like to do it. So that's what I got on family activities, guys. And I could say, Ms. Jones, with the, I know you said you had pizza, but you're allowed to every once in a while have something that's not necessarily healthy. It's okay. Oh, definitely. You definitely have to indulge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Just not every day. <laughs> okay. Was there anything else on that slide or did you cover everything? Nope, that's just some ideas. I covered the highlights. Okay. All right. Ms. Truzo, do you see the slide? <laughs> Not yet, so just remind me what's coming because, you know, okay. my, my okay. internet's a little slower. Okay, we're on the, um, what does it mean to be an Apex coach? Oh, yes, to be an Apex coach. So some of you uh, having children at different grade levels may realize, like, I realize, oh, I get an email every Sunday about how my son is doing in Apex. Um, and that's because his teacher assigned me as a coach so I can get updates from Apex of, oh, he's done everything and this is his grade currently in Apex. And I think that's important because we're so used to being able to check our children's progress through Synergy and see their grades that now a lot of us are feeling a little lost. Like, how do I know if they've done everything? I've just got to trust what they're telling me. I don't know. So if you're not already a coach for your child, you can email your teacher and ask, hey, can you please assign me as a coach? Because truthfully, the teachers were thrown a lot of things that they had to learn right away to be able to do this distance learning and may have missed the piece where they could assign you as a coach. So it's okay to reach out and say, hey, can you please assign me as a coach so I can monitor my child's progress? And that way you can see, okay, this is the grade they're getting. Because you want to make sure, even though grades have been determined um, based on the quarter one and two being average for the semester and with the third quarter grade, students still need to pass APEX. They'll get a pass or fail grade for this. So you want to make sure that they're getting that passing grade. And I'm just going to touch upon what Ms. Truzo just mentioned. Again, this is going over now that we have an actual um, decision as far as grades. Like Mr. Uzo said, it's the first quarter grade and it's averaged in with the third quarter grade. So it's in green, you'll see it says quarter one plus quarter two divided by two gives you semester one grade. And then the semester one grade plus quarter three divided by two gives you the final grade. But some students have asked, so how do I figure it out? That's how you figure it out. Now, if you're a student that had failed based on that formula, you have to make sure that you're doing the apex work or packet work and that has to be handed in in order to get credit for that class. And if you have any questions about that, definitely talk to myself or Ms. Truzel via email or call our Google Voice number. Okay, so back to proofs of residency. Ms. Uh, Shaw last week on episode four touched on this and I just wanted to do a little uh, reminder about it. This is for proofs of residency for eighth grade. So if you are an eighth grade student or parent and you have not already submitted your two proofs of residency, we would like you to go ahead and do that. You can refer to episode four where there was an actual link to show you how to get on and upload those for your transition to high school. Once again, you'll need a category one. So Ms. Shaw identified that as something do, uh, to do with your house, such as a lease or a mortgage statement or a rental statement. And then a category two, which is some type of utility bill. A lot of people use SMECO. 
Uh, important thing here uh, is to do the whole entire bill, not just the stub portion. We definitely need the whole thing with both service address and access address. So we're looking forward to you guys turning those in for a smooth transition to high school. One thing I wanted to add here is when you are a parent that's trying to upload your proofs of residency to Parent View, it, it is a long process. You actually have to go on there and reaffirm all of your child's emergency information before you get to the part that you could actually upload the documentation. So if you got to that part where you're looking at all your child's information, you're in the right spot. And I know Ms. Truzell is a parent of an eighth grader, and I think she can confirm that pretty much. <laughs> Well, yeah, I actually emailed mine because uh, technology was not being my friend. So uh, I had to get out of that and I just ended up emailing Michelle my proofs of domicile to her. Which is a perfect way too. either way works. Either way is fine. Okay. Ms. Truza, we're on the uh, Apex agenda for week five slide. All right, so as you guys know, we're just showing you your weekly agendas just to make sure that you're getting free work. We have our sixth grade schedule up there of everything that you need to do for the week. We have our seventh grade schedule up there, your nice little checklist. Uh, make sure that you're completing all your assignments so you can get that passing grade in Apex. And then on the next slide, we'll have our eighth grade uh, checklist as well that shows what you need to complete in eighth grade and make sure that you're just doing that so that way you can get your passing grade. Uh, the next slide will have our team schedule. And as you guys know, teams is optional. However, we highly suggest if you're struggling with any content in Apex or in your packets, attend the teams meeting. That's when you can ask teachers questions or schedule to be like, hey, I need a little extra help here for them to be able to work with you. And related arts, which is not something that you get to do through Apex, our related arts teachers are doing a lot of fun things with you during their scheduled time to keep working on those skills, especially if you're in band or strings, chorus, uh, you're getting to do those cool little warm ups. I know uh, emails have been sent out of uh, things you can join app wise to be able to continue with your practicing and same with uh, DPC and computer. So just make sure you're checking in. PE has some also active awesome activities as well. They're doing oh. a really good job. Fun. A lot of fun. Nice. OK, so midweek next week, you're going to be getting an email um, that's going to be titled. It's going to be from the Center for Abuse Persons. Uh, these are the people that came in earlier in the year to talk to our health classes about safe relationships. Um, they said there's some information that they wanted to share with you all. So it's going to be some information about creating an attitude of gratitude. What are you grateful for? Grateful for? Uh, positivity, finding the sunny side of life. Okay, what are the, some of the positives going on right now in your lives? Um, how to be optimistic during a pandemic. So what are the, some of the things you can be optimistic about? And then two quick relaxation techniques that they're going to go over with you as well. So this is information that we're going to be sharing with you again sometime mid next week. Uh, well, actually, we record this on Friday, so sometime, let's say like Wednesday or Thursday, you'll get this email from us. Um, so please go through it. Take a look at the information we send you. Um, we'll also have it posted on our website. And again, just like last week, we showed you that we have a counseling department website. So please go to the if you go to Picklewax's website, go to the departments, click on counseling department, and then we're going to have everything posted on the student side for resources. And Ms. Shuzan, now we're on the hot spots in the area slide. Awesome. I know we've been keeping this hot spots area slide in, and you guys may be tired of seeing it, but it's just a reminder that sometimes our internet is not working when we need to locate to go somewhere else. These are just the reminders of where you, the different schools you can go to, the libraries, fast food establishments, or the Thunderbird Motel. I know it's kind of, I've used the fast food establishment because for instance, I was out shopping and I needed to answer a question for a parent and I was able to get online uh, there at the uh, fast food place, sat in the parking lot and was able to email out. So that way I was doing everything that I needed to do and still making sure that I got the necessities because we all know you have to get out early if you want to get that TP and paper towels. So I was out early trying to get what I needed from my family. So just making those, one way I know if you live far away, it might make it easier and the uh, kids can work while you're doing what you need to do. 
And then our next slide, um, we're promoting it now. It's been up and running for a little while, but we wanted to make sure that we promoted the cabanas in the area. The uh, in the slide, sorry, it's taking me a little longer, but the slide is talking about places where you can get uh, food and personal hygiene products that you may need in the house if you are struggling to get them or need a little extra help. There's one lo located at the Newburg Fire Department. There's another one located in La Plata, depending on what you're closer to. Also, there's a phone number on there that you can call if you need lifestyles to help you out. Um, there's a 301-383-3686 and then a 301-609-9900. Uh, if you're struggling with anything, they will definitely help you out there. And then, uh, and those cabanas have this stuff available from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's Monday through Friday. Well, also you can get lunches they're available at the different schools, but Higdon is one of the schools where you can go and pick up lunch from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It just has to be a student uh, up to the age of 18, drive through, and they give you a lovely grocery bag full of tons of items, a couple milk, cereal, sandwich, uh, a couple snacks. So if you need anything, those are great resources to use. And lastly, the new packets are avail were, became available May 1st. So it's time to pick up that new packet to make sure you're keeping up with your distance learning because those packets, especially if you're in danger of failing, you need to complete those packets to be able to pass. Mm -hmm. And that's what will get you your passing grade. So just remind you, you can pick them up. They're available at Higdon. So drive through from 11 to 1, get your lunch and get your new packets. And one thing I wanted to touch upon, I was over at Higdon last Thursday. And I have to say there really weren't that many people there. So there aren't that many parents taking advantage of those lunches like they were in the very beginning of this. So if you're a parent that, you know, again, they give you a very large uh, bag of food that definitely can help out your family. So take advantage of that while it's there and offered to you. So. And I'm not sure if Ms. Truzo sees the slide yet. It's that time. It's the end of our presentation. So All right. it is now time for the Pico Pledge. We're not going to do the balls this time. So, <laughs> <laughs> you all With, ready? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. One, With two, my words oh, four, four. <laughs> and actions, I pledge I to be respectful, respectful responsible, responsible, safe, and, and proud. proud. And remember, you can have that, that Pico Pride. Pride. <laughs> I feel like it's getting worse every week than it, instead of getting better, actually. <laughs> you got to go with the rhythm. I know. I don't have rhythm. Listen for the other person because that just throws you off. Mm, that's true. Good point. I'm going to stop recording now so they can see our faces again. And bigger faces. There we go. All right. Well, that's the end of our, again, video. This is, uh, hope you have a great week. Um, Ms. Jones, since you're uh, new to this, anything you want to add? I just want to let everybody know that remember we as the student service team at Pickle Waxen are here for you and if you need us you know how to get in contact with us and we'll be thinking about you. And I do believe you the next week or the following week we're going to have Mr. Patterson with us so you'll have that special guest next week or the following week. You'll have a good week and we'll see you soon. Bye, Bye guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>